Hello there guys, this is Fusion Master back here again for another tutorial video. Um, this is the follow-up and the final Terraria video I'm doing for uh, Click Team Fusion 2.5. So, um, today, what we're going to want to start by doing is we're going to get all this clutter out of the way. Because, we're going to make room for the character. Finally, we're going to add in a playable character that can interact with the environment. So, for starters, you can make your own little character, or your own little dude here. Uh, but personally, I would suggest heading over to games in your library toolbar if you have this library already implemented. This is Click Teams set library. Head over to Miscellaneous 2, Horror Sprites, and grab Mugs. I just like the way he looks and interacts. He already has a bunch of smooth uh, animations here. So, he looks good, just walking around. Uh, so I would use him. And we're going to want to give Muggs the platform movement. This will allow him to interact with the environment like uh, like Mario or any of those other platforming uh, characters would. So, we're going to want to set... Let's see. Set this to button 2, the control. Uh, what that's going to do is it's going to set his jump button to control. Uh, rather than shift, which is going to work a lot better. So let's run this frame. Let's see what we got here. So I don't know if you cut there or not, but when we started the frame, uh, he just fell, and he did that because we did not establish that he's supposed to collide with the environment. So go over here and tell him collisions with this mugs is going to bounce. So let me start up again. See here. He now bounces with our environment, which is good. Um, his jump is weak right now, and that's kind of a, you know, doesn't look very good. So let's make that a little bit stronger. Head back over here. Uh, and we're going to want to set his strength to maybe 100. Let's put his gravity at 40. Let's see what that looks. Ah, that's much better. Okay. Now we're going to want to set so that he can, or you can, uh, break blocks. You can actually uh, get down here into the good stuff. So to do that, first off, we're going to want to give every single block here an alternative value. We're going to call that health. So let's give ground health of 100. Dirt has a little bit less health, it's easier to break. And cobble has a lot more health, so 250. Okay, uh, and then we're going to want to set it over here. So that when the mouse is over an object, when the mouse pointer is over the player group, and when the mouse left button is repeatedly pressed, Every one hundredth of a second, whatever, uh, whatever object, whatever uh, player object, group player object, uh, your mouse pointer is over when doing this is going to subtract from their health. Let's go over here and ensure that the health is lower or equal to zero. This is destroyed. I like to put it at uh, lower equal instead of just equal. Because although technically it should only ever go down to equal before destroying, uh, occasionally this will happen when you have a lot of objects going on in one frame. Uh, it will skip over zero, and or it won't like qualify fast enough, uh, and then you can get into the uh, nether region of that area. Uh, so it can get down to the negatives, and your thing won't censor that, and then you end up with a bugged object. So make sure to always put lower equal if you're doing health-wise stuff. Uh, so, if we just check out here, we should, yep, there you go, after holding your mouse over an object and holding, it deletes. Now, that's pretty slow. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie there, that's, uh, that's pretty slow. So, how about we make it, let's see, every one, that's about, now that's about as low as we can go. So, um, let's see, we can do this, though. Let's do subtract, maybe 10. Yeah, let's subtract and let's see what that looks like. 
There we go. That's a lot faster. So there we go. We got a little mining object here. Uh, and you can always, uh, so if you wanted, you could always set your mining object to be more powerful. So if you wanted to, like, have, like, tiers of pickaxes, it doesn't always need to break 10 off. You know, it doesn't always need 10. Here's what you could do. You go to tier, go to properties, and set global value. Pickaxe. And then whatever you want your pickaxe strength to be, set it here. So maybe you want our pickaxe strength to be 10 for right now. Then, instead of saying subtract 10 from health, you can say subtract pickaxe from health. So that would be the same thing for right now. Uh, but if I was to change this to 100, and as you can see here, I'm just mowing through all this because my pickaxe is extremely powerful. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it at 100 for now because I want to be able to just you know get through all this stuff nice and fast for you guys to show you. Uh, but as you can see, we're not moving. Our character's not moving uh, as we're moving down. So what I want to do to fix this is put always go over here. Scrolling, center the window position in the frame. You want to click on him. That's going to center your window. Your window always on him. So if we move over here, you move with him. See, we move down. You move with him. So you get moved down here, and you get to see all this stuff. Uh, I'm going to try and look for a cave, ideally right now, because I want to find one of those. Because caves do look after the uh, random generation thing. Caves do look pretty cool. Uh, down here, so I'm gonna want to find one of those, but uh, it doesn't look like I'm finding any. But that's about it. Oh, here's one. That's about it for the uh, the character and their movement and their works. Uh, I'm not going to uh, I'm not gonna further this tutorial anymore because most of the stuff from here is pretty boring um, to do and tedious. Uh, and I don't know how much know how much how dedicated you guys are to this, uh, but. Uh, I would suggest, once you got to this point, figure it out uh, yourself, and uh, anything you want to add to it, any touch you want to add, I would suggest that you make your own, uh, and, you know, make your game unique, but, you know, with this base, obviously, uh, and go out there and do it yourself, uh, I think you uh, make some cool stuff, but uh, if you guys are interested, I am going to upload a video here uh, of my finished product, because I did finish the game in my own vision. Um, but I'm going to upload a video of my finished product and just show you guys what's going on there. Uh, and if you guys do like that, uh, and you guys want me to show you how to make that exactly, just so you guys can play around with it, or, I mean, I don't know, I don't care if you put it on some website or something. Um, but if I, you guys want that, uh, then go ahead and get 100 likes on this video. I know that's a lot, but I'm really not interested, interested in uh, making the whole tutorial series, because it is a lot of whole a lot of work, um, and it's not entirely what I was thinking I wanted to do, but if you guys show, you know, 100 likes, that clearly shows you love it, and you want to see it, so 100 likes on this video, and I would be more than happy to show you guys how to do it. Make sure to check out the next video, I'm going to show you the uh, finished product that I have, um, and make sure to comment down below anything you either want me to show you how to do, or any questions you had about this video. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you liked it. There's more content to come. And thank you guys for watching. I shall talk to you later.